Starship is currently still in its development stage. So far, it has only carried test payloads like Starlink dummies, but in the near future, it is expected to become a crewed vehicle capable of transporting hundreds of people to Mars. So, how will a ship of this size support human life on such a long journey? Let's find out. First off, even though Elon Musk mentioned that Starship can carry at least 100 people to Mars in one trip, this is unlikely to happen. It's not because the ship can't technically handle that many people, but because of human limitations. You can only fit so many people in one place before someone starts to lose it. Thankfully, in the spring of 2013, NASA's Human Research Program studied how much space is actually needed to support crews during long exploration missions. They looked into the minimum volume in cubic meters or feet required to maintain the health, performance, and well-being of astronauts during extended periods of isolation and confinement in harsh environments. Technically, smaller spaces could work, but from human factors and behavioral health perspective, that would be a terrible idea. Not enough room can lead to stress, tension, and poor mental health, which would seriously affect both the crew's performance and the success of the mission. This minimum habitable volume, or NHV, depends on several things, crew size, mission length, and the tasks they need to perform. It also has to allow enough personal space for people to stay psychologically healthy. So, what's the realistic number of people Starship could carry to Mars on one trip right now? The answer is about 20. That's quite a cut from 100, but still a decent number for the first few missions. And it's worth noting that Starship may grow in size or capability in the future, which could eventually support larger crews safely. So let me know in the comments how many people Starship should carry. So far, the most likely crew layout for Starship divides the pressurized living space into multiple decks, with a central stairway or elevator connecting them. This is a common design choice in spacecraft concepts, and some versions even include two deck openings that are slightly offset from one another. This offset helps reduce the risk of accidents in zero gravity, where someone might try to fly through multiple levels too quickly. To prevent falls during gravity conditions on Earth or Mars, removable safety rails are placed around the openings. The entire lower level of the Starship habitat will likely be dedicated to the airlock and cargo bay, since eventually the goal is to land on Mars and send crew and equipment to the surface. Starship is a very tall vehicle, and one of the few advantages of it can land on the Moon or Mars without tipping over is that its center of gravity is currently very low. This is thanks to the heavy engines and fuel tanks located at the bottom. To keep that center of gravity as low as possible, all the heavy equipment and supplies will need to be stored in the lower decks. This includes the rovers, robots, water systems, oxygen tanks, HVAC systems, food supplies, and waste storage. Speaking of food and water, a typical crew member needs about 5 kilograms of supplies per day, including food, water, and oxygen, to perform daily activities during a space mission. Interestingly, they also produce nearly the same amount of waste, solid waste, liquid waste, and carbon dioxide. On average, each day, a crew member consumes around 0.84 kilograms of oxygen, 0.62 kilograms of food, and 3.54 kilograms of water. Through the body's natural processes, this is converted into approximately 0.11 kilograms of solid waste, 3.89 kilograms of liquid waste, and 1 kilogram of carbon dioxide. These numbers can vary depending on the mission tasks and individual activity levels, but they all follow the basic principle of mass balance. Whatever goes in must come out in some form. For missions lasting more than a week, the volume and types of waste start to increase. Things like hair, fingernails, and dead skin flakes begin to accumulate. And while they may seem minor, they still need to be managed over time. Actual water use during space missions is usually much higher than the basic 3.5 kilograms per day. 
This is mainly due to non-biological uses such as hygiene, including showering and cleaning. In fact, real usage can be close to double that amount. Fortunately, we do not have to launch huge amounts of water from Earth. Instead, we recycle it. On the International Space Station, about 93% of used water is recovered. That includes urine, which is filtered and processed back into clean drinking water. Yes, astronauts drink their own pee. It might not sound pleasant, but it is just part of life in space and something they sign up for. With a trip to Mars lasting several months, a reliable space toilet is crucial. You're not waiting until touchdown to use the restroom. In the absence of gravity, space toilets rely on airflow to pull urine and feces away from the body and into the proper receptacles. A new feature of the latest space toilet is the automatic start of airflow when the lid is lifted. This also helps with odor control. Popular astronaut demand includes a more ergonomic design that requires less cleaning and maintenance. The parts are durable and corrosion resistant, reducing the need for unscheduled repairs. Less time spent on plumbing means more time for the crew to focus on science and other high-priority exploration tasks. For urination, the crew uses a specially shaped funnel and hose, essentially a suction cup, while bowel movements are handled using a seat. The funnel and seat can be used at the same time based on feedback from female astronauts. Though the seat may look small and pointy, it is designed for microgravity and ensures proper body contact so everything ends up where it should. Toilet paper wipes and gloves are disposed of in watertight bags. Solid waste, sealed in individual watertight bags, is compacted and stored in a removable fecal storage canister. NASA has found that everyone in space needs at least two hours of exercise per day. Without Earth's gravity, both bone and muscle begin to atrophy as they become smaller and weaker. Just like on Earth, exercise is critical for maintaining healthy bones and muscles in space. Thankfully, there are now plenty of options to choose from. One key piece of equipment uses a piston and flywheel system to provide resistance that mimics weightlifting in microgravity. There are also stationary bikes and treadmills with tie-downs, allowing astronauts to get in cardiovascular workouts even in zero gravity. While current exercise programs help reduce changes in the musculoskeletal system, results vary from person to person. Even with astronauts exercising up to 10 hours a week, some still lose muscle mass and bone density. In addition, the exercise routines currently in use may not fully suit longer exploration missions, such as a trip to Mars or extended time aboard a starship. Challenges include limited space, managing heat and moisture, equipment maintenance, and finding time for exercise without interfering with the work of other crew members. These difficulties become even greater when living with 20 or more other people in a shared environment. A more effective way to deal with bone loss in space could be the creation of artificial gravity. In a 2024 tweet, Elon Musk wrote, Starship will have a small spin on the way to Mars. Even a tiny gravity vector is better than none. The concept relies on centrifugal force. When an object spins around a central point, like a weight on a string being swung in a circle, it experiences inertia that pulls it outward. For someone inside a rotating structure, this outward force feels like gravity. In reality, it is the result of the object's inertia resisting the constant change in direction. Right now, this idea is still in an early stage and feels closer to science fiction than reality. When building life support systems for Starship, one key consideration is the atmosphere. Life support systems in space must maintain an atmosphere composed, at a minimum, of oxygen, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. The partial pressure of each gas contributes to the total cabin pressure. However, eliminating diluent gases such as nitrogen can significantly increase fire risks. This is especially true during ground operations, where structural requirements may demand that the cabin pressure exceed the external atmospheric pressure. The Apollo 1 tragedy is a well-known example of this risk. In addition, high concentrations of oxygen can lead to oxygen toxicity, which poses a serious health threat. For these reasons, most modern crewed spacecraft use a conventional air mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. 
Pure oxygen is typically reserved for use in pressure suits during spacewalks where maintaining low suit pressure is necessary for mobility. Another important factor is oxygen supply. The average human consumes about 660 liters of oxygen per day. This means that SpaceX must either carry a massive supply of oxygen on board or generate it continuously. Fortunately, the technology used on the International Space Station, ISS, for oxygen generation is compact and adaptable. It relies on electrolysis, a process that splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. The ISS has used this method successfully for years. Electrolysis would also support several other critical systems on Starship. It can aid in waste reclamation, water recycling, and even fuel production. By combining the hydrogen produced during electrolysis with carbon dioxide exhaled by the crew, it is possible to generate both water and methane. The water can be purified for drinking, and the methane could potentially be used to replenish Starship's methalox fuel supply. Of course, this process is not perfect. There is still a significant gap between how much oxygen and water the crew uses and how much can be generated in real time. As a result, SpaceX will still need to allocate onboard storage space for reserves of oxygen, water, and other essential supplies. Even though Elon has said that Starship's life support system will be fairly straightforward, he has good reason to be confident. SpaceX has gained valuable experience with life support on Crew Dragon. However, Starship is a completely different challenge. It will need to support a number of people at a scale never seen before in spaceflight. Right now, SpaceX is still hiring life support systems engineers for Crew Dragon, especially with the Artemis 3 mission approaching. Once they've successfully figured out how to land Starship reliably, the company is expected to shift more focus to developing the Human Landing System, HLS, version for crewed lunar and Mars missions. People often imagine Starship as a kind of cruise ship for space, but the reality is very different. Life in space has never been a comfortable experience, and the destination, Mars, is an even harsher environment. Still, there are people willing to go, driven by curiosity and the desire to push the boundaries of human understanding. What about you? Would you take a trip on Starship?